Hi, I'm Mike and thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be making these uh, measuring cups and these um, kits are sold through Penn State Industries and I use four different types of wood for the handles and I also used uh, black epoxy uh, putty to make these uh, inlays here and I sealed the handles using friction polish because I wanted to have uh, that really nice glossy look to the handles but also that protective shellac uh, coating that the, uh, uh, the friction polish provides and I followed that step by using this Renaissance wax polish because I also wanted to give the uh, handles you know that extraordinary um, wax polish finish and I think this uh, polish really does that does a trick on providing that uh, that seal to them so stay with me and I'll walk you through every step on how to make these um, not only functional but you know these beautiful measuring cups the measuring cup kit comes with a two-page detailed instructions it comes with the four cups this is a one cup a half cup a third of a cup and a quarter cup it comes with four barrels that are uh, about three and a quarter inches long comes with four small rings, four fennels, and two tip nuts. What you'll need to supply are the uh, measuring cup bushings and a seven millimeter brad tip drill bit, and you need to uh, supply your own blanks. You can use all the same species wood for your blanks, whereas I have chosen to use I have four different species. I have uh, a zombie, a laddie, a koa, and a chalky vigo. I have the blanks cut to three and five sixteen inches, and now I just need to find the center of each blank, and then I can proceed over to the uh, drill press. Now have my blank set up in my center finder vise. A couple of things you want to do before you make your hole is to make sure that your drill bit goes all the way through your uh, blank. Two, set up the blank so it right where to make a little indention here and make sure that's right in the middle and it looks like it is. And then we can put it on the vise here. When videoing my uh, technique on inserting these tubes into the uh, blanks, I accidentally had my camera set on time lapse, so I wasn't ac wasn't able to accurately show you how to, to how I did this. But uh, the preparation is uh, preparing these blanks to make a measuring cup is very similar to making a pen blank, and I'll just show you exactly what I did on these other ones. Uh, to get the blank. Uh, barrel. You need to scuff it up a little bit with some sandpaper. Add your super glue to the uh, to the uh, barrel, and then just insert it by twisting the uh, barrel into the uh, hole of the blank. And that's it. Now I'll dry in just a few seconds, and then you'll be ready to uh, go on to the next step. Another tool that you'll probably need when making these blanks for the measuring cups is what they call a seven millimeter barrel trimmer. It's the same trimmer that you would use when you're making your pens. Basically, um, it trims your your blank so it'll be even with your barrel. So, so your barrel and your blank will be square. And this is how it operates. <laughs> Basically, turn it until you can see the brass on top uh, the, at the same level as your blank. That, that way, you'll know that it's uh, square. And you do the same thing to the other end too. The cut blank is mounted to my pen mandrel, and I did take the liberty of um, rounding off the edges over on my belt sander just to take the edge off to make it easier to turn the blank. <clears throat> 
and uh, I don't really know the exact diameter that this uh, rounded piece will be, so I'm just going to just round it over, and then uh, we'll go from there and see what type of shape I can make make the handle. Uh, so that'll all depend on how thick this uh, blank will be after after all the turning. The handle now is all turned round, and it actually came out to about 0.95 inches diameter after you completely turn it round. And now this will be the fennel side, and this will be the cup side. And what I'm thinking is that I want the this end here on the fennel side to be the widest part, and then narrow narrow it down going in this direction. I think I'm gonna make a little lip over here on the cup side and make about a quarter inch groove here on the fennel side. This is the middle, so everything will be, be, be tapering down here. And then I, and around the ends here, I will have to, to taper it down to, uh, to the same diameter as the bushings here on each end. So let me go ahead and start turning this, and we'll see uh, uh, what it looks like uh, when I finish turning it. I think I like the shape of the handle now. Uh, that's, I was able to reduce the, the tail end here about 20% and then had, had it gradually go down to about a half inch or so from the, from the head and have a nice little subtle lip right here and then it, then it flows back down to where the head of the bushing is. And back here I have about a 3 16th inch groove that I made here. And I'm gonna use some black epoxy putty to be able to fill this in and then sculpt that into the uh, handle once it dries. And you see here that it tapers back down here. So it's just a subtle uh, narrowing of the handle. It's not really big bulky at this end here. And uh, I didn't want it to be like an ice cream scoop or anything like that. I just wanted it to be, uh, has some nice shape to it. So let me go ahead and turn the other three, uh, very similar to this one right here. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna use that black epoxy putty to fill in the little groove right here. A couple years ago I made this coffee scoop handle. It's made out of koa wood and I put a uh, black epoxy inlay in the handle. You can see here that's uh, got a nice little black ribbon to the to the handle. And I want to do the same thing with these measuring cup handles. I left a little groove in here so I can uh, apply the uh, epoxy paste Epoxy putty, sorry, epoxy putty into the groove here. And the epoxy I use is a, a two, obviously a two-part epoxy, and it's from a, a epoxy sculpt. So take a portion of this, take a portion of this, you roll it up in a ball, mix it up real good, and then you want to uh, put it into the groove here, and pack it down real good, and let it dry overnight, and then. Tomorrow I'll come back, put it back on the lathe, and uh, smooth it out with a tool, and then we'll get a nice little black ribbon here, and the handle. So let me show you how I mix it up and how I put it, uh, put it in the groove here. Yeah, part A and part B in uh, little measuring cups here, and it's very easy to uh, mix up. You just have to get equal parts, and then. Uh, Sort of mold it together. And I'll go ahead and do this, show you how I get started on it. And then I'll come back and show you exactly how I do it. Okay, just break it apart and make sure that there's no more little white epoxy left in there. Make sure it's all just molded back and forth like this. And you just roll it out. Put it inside that little groove here. Like so, I'll pack it down in there real good. 
Okay, I got uh, all four of them uh, epoxy epoxified. And uh, it's better, best to make it a little bit proud of your groove because uh, it's always better to have too much than not enough. And you're gonna be going back over this with your uh, lathe tool and sanding it. So <clears throat> whatever's uh, on top of the groove and over on the sides and stuff, they'll just come right off with your tools. So let this sit overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and uh, put them back on the lathe. Cured overnight and you can see that it makes a nice black belt around the handle. It really is rock hard. So I want to remove this with my lathe tool here and all you have to do is just go very lightly across the, uh, the piece until you remove all the wood that's about the same level as the uh, as your handle is and then we'll come back and just sand it down i'll sand it all the way through grit number f about 400 or so and uh, then it'll just be completely flush with the uh, handle so let me go ahead and get started on this and uh, i'll show you what i mean ready to add the high friction polish to these handles. It's a four-step process and from start to finish on a piece about this size will take you about 10 minutes. And the first process is using denature alcohol to clean the piece and I use uh, paper towels and actually this is called Scott's Rags in the Box. It's very important to just use a paper towel in this uh, process. So I just uh, wipe this on and then you turn the lathe on and just clean the piece of the wood, wood here. And you see that the uh, see the dirt and grime that's been coming off on the uh, um, from the piece. Just you know, wipe it down here a couple times, real good. And uh, you can just see that uh, the, a lot of uh, grime. Sawdust that are still on the uh, on the handle. Before adding the sanding sealer, make sure you shake the can really good, and then you can just put a dab on your paper towel here and work it in like so. Don't really have to even turn the lathe on. You can just rub it in like this, and I usually put a. Uh, two coats on here and this this uh, sanding sealer dries pretty quickly probably within a minute or two you can add the second for the fun part I'm gonna add the friction polish and uh, I usually put the amount about the amount of uh, friction polish I need to, to complete the, uh, the process and to a small bottle because uh, it's easier to shake up that way and you can just put some on a small dab on your cloth. And here you need to run your lathe at about 2,500, 2,700 RPMs because you want to build up a lot of heat on this. And let me show you real quick how I do that. Feel the heat build up on your finger, and that, you know, that way you know that the wax is melting in the polish. You just go back and forth like this. You can add two or three coats, many coats as you want. I usually just add two. Now for the final step, I'm going to add the Renaissance wax polish. And this is the polish that has a distillate in it, and you can smell it when you're applying it your piece and you want to get this on here really smooth don't leave any clumps on it just rub it in like this 
and make sure you get all the way around it really good. And since it has a distillate in there, it dries fairly quickly, probably within a minute or two. It will be uh, dry enough where you can uh, turn the lathe on and uh, polish it. I got the camera back on. I'm going to show you after I add this polish and turn the lathe on. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it on the camera, but you can just see how the uh, the wood will just start shining really bright with this uh, polish on here. And when you're applying the polish here, you don't want to create any friction on there. You just want to rub it back and forth and just rub in the uh, the waxes that have been uh, left on the piece after the distillate evaporates off. So let me show you this. That's the first coat. You can just see how the wood is just really shiny now. And so I'm going to put uh, another couple coats on here with this Renaissance wax. And then I think the piece will be almost finished. And here are the four handles after I finish adding the friction polish and the crystal wax. You see, not only the wood uh, has a really nice shiny sheen to it, but also the black epoxy inlays that I put into it. They shine really nice too. Uh, so now we'll go to the final step that is when we're adding add the fennel and the uh, measuring cups to these handles. Now's the time to attach the cup to the handle and the fennel to the handle. The fennels come with a hole at the very end of the fennel. And you want to align the handle and the cup so that the fennel hole will be on the side of the cup because the fennel also accommodates the ring, the small rings here. And you want the rings to be able to hang from the side and not from the top. So once I put this together, I think you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So you have your <coughs> tip nut here. And if you go in and place that on your cup, but don't tighten it too much. And then when you slide your handle onto your cup, then you'll be able to take that off and your thread and that right here is inside your inside your <clears throat> your handle. So we'll put that back on here. So, and then you want to align your fennel so that the holes will be on the side, just like this. And the holes will be on the side. So the best way I found to do this is to take this back off and press this fennel as far in as you can. Then you can use your assembly device here and then you can sort of wedge that fennel inside the handle hole. Just like that. Now your fennel is on here, and since it will be on the side, the fennel holes will be left on the side, just like that. So that's the easiest way to be able to attach the handles to the cup and the fennels. And uh, so as soon as I finish doing this other one and attach the rings to the fiddles, then this project will be finished. I'll be glad to show it to you.